The MK1250 extruders for standard hot flow operate with the most common 1.75 millimeter filaments on the market with surface temperatures up to 250 C. This includes ABS, conductive ABS, ABS polycarbonate alloy, and flame retardant ABS. Lay brick, lay wood, nylon, PETG, PLA, PLA stainless steel, polypropylene, PVA, T-glaze, and thermochrome. All right, I'm gonna give you an overview of the MK1-250 print head. This is our Hyrel 3D print heads for 1.75 millimeter filament at up to 250 degrees C. This is the head in its entirety. So we're gonna start with the pneumatic fitting here. You would have your low friction guide tube, which would be seated in this pneumatic fitting. And uh, just insert it to place it and to remove it, you press down on the blue collar and just pull your tube out. Through this tube is gonna be your 1.75 millimeter filament. In this case, I'm showing ABS. It goes through the fitting and into the feed chamber. So here it's, on, it's going to be on the other side of that drive shaft. And this is the motor itself. So the drive shaft, the filament's on one side, and this pressure plate keeps a spring which presses against a rod with two bearings on it. And that keeps the filament pressed appropriately against the drive shaft where it's hobbed or toothed. And uh, the bearings keep it centered and in position and it drives down into a PTFE or a Teflon guide tube all the way down which mates with the top of the nozzle. Only the brass nozzle and this uh, disc down here are the part that gets really hot. Then the filament is forced out through our default 0.5 millimeter nozzle and we also have nozzles in 0.35, 0.75, 1 millimeter and we have blanks if you want to make your own custom nozzle size. To give you a close up of that process this is the fusion chamber in the guide tube but it's been cut away. So you can see that the filament comes in through the tube and goes all the way into that nozzle. And how far it goes, if I hold it here and pull it out, you can see that it goes that far all the way to the bottom of the nozzle. And this is how the tube is cut out to mate properly with the nozzle so that there's no place for any misfeed or any buildup. And that's why our nozzles are not interchangeable with others because ours are specially made to mate with our PTFE tubes. This is the cooling fan which blows cold air out onto the material that's already been deposited. And this was a part that we actually print out of peak on our high temperature head, our MK1-450. So this not only directs the airflow but it acts as an insulator between the heat that radiates out of the fusion chamber and the material you've already deposited. Coming back to the front, these are the gibs that mechanically hold the head in place. And once your head is loaded, you'll tighten them up with a thumb screw from the back to keep it rigidly in place. This is a spacer board which is set so that when you put this all the way down, it's the proper distance so that these electrical connectors will hook into the receiving connector on the yoke circuit board. Above them we have two screws which are adjusted with a two and a half millimeter hex driver. These screws are here so that you can slide the board up or down, in effect moving the head up or down so that when you print with multiple heads cooperating on the same print, they're aligned properly. This is a programming port. So if there's a firmware release that requires you to flash new firmware on your print heads, you take your ST link, which is a programming dongle, you'll line up the top, the tabs and the slots. Put that in, plug this into the printer that you're driving the software from, and flash a new version of firmware on the head. This port is also used for our feed chamber cooling fan. So if you're printing a low temperature material like PLA or something that prints at about 215 or less, you want to plug in this port right here for power, and then just take the feed chamber cooling fan, put the round part into the round hole, and snap that down. And now you've got additional cooling for your low temperature filament so that the heat doesn't travel up the filament and melt it ahead of time giving it feed problems. Okay. These are all your connectors that actually operate the head themselves and at the very top is a manual feed switch so looking at it from the the way it's normally viewed if you push this lever to the left that will manually retract filament and if you push it to the right it will manually advance filament so we use that when we're loading material. 
Now we have all these LEDs on top which give you a status and if you look at the graphic on the side of the screen that'll tell you which LEDs basically this is a heartbeat, this is communication transmit and receive, this is an, I think this one's the error light, this is uh, heating, the fan, direction of movement and power for movement. Okay. These wires, these first four wires operate the motor the red and black wires that come all the way down operate the cooling fan. The two silver wires that come down are an RTD or a temperature return device. And on older heads, these might be red, but they'll be very skinny compared to the heating element. So that brings the temperature reading back to the little chip up here. And then the thick red wires are the actual heating element, which causes your filament to melt. Uh, the only maintenance that'll need to be done on this. Occasionally, if you're trying to print at a speed that's too fast for the temperature that your head's set to, these hobs or teeth can erode some of the filament and you may get some debris built up in the teeth and just sitting on the bottom of your, your uh, service hole here. What you can do is just take a vacuum to it or an air hose and just clean out that debris. And occasionally you'll get some buildup of uh, hot plastic on the bottom. You can just hit that as needed with a wire brush to clean it off. When you receive your print head, it'll have some filament remaining from when we did our test prints. So you want to heat the head up to service temperature, manually retract it until this swings free of the driving motor, and just pull that piece out. At the very bottom of it, it should be molten, come to a point, which means that you remove the material all the way down to where it was molten, which is what we're looking for. You're going to take your next piece of filament, route it properly through the tube, and take the very last couple of, maybe last inch or two inches and just straighten it out so it feeds right. And we're going to drive it straight down and we're going to nestle it between the two bearings and on the other side of the hobs, between the hobs and the bearings. And you're going to use the manual advance button, move that lever to the right, until the filament goes into that white collar on the bottom. Once it's been grabbed by the motor and is underneath that white collar, inside that white tube, you'll just reseat the guide tube by pushing it in place and then go back to your software and advance it with the software. After a brief delay as you're filling filament to, to fill in the void where the other filament came out, it'll push out the old material and if there's a color change you'll see the color go from the old color through a series of graduations until the new material is coming out. Any questions please contact us at highrail3d.com and highrail3d.net.